Have you ever wondered about the actual performance difference between the latest Intel Core i7 13700K and the 12700K? Well, you've come to the right place, because today I'll not only be comparing specs and clock speeds, but also productivity and gaming performance. Could an upgrade maybe be worth it to some of you? Or is it wiser to just skip this generation at the end of the day? After all, we are not only seeing improvements, but downsides as well. First, let's talk price. The 13700K in March 2023 goes for like 400 to 420 US dollars. The predecessor 12700K can be had for 310 to 330 dollars. Cores and threads. The older 12700K in total comes with 12 cores and 20 threads, eight of which are P cores. What's left are four E cores. With the 13700K, Intel has noticeably increased the core and thread count to 16 cores in total and 24 threads. We are still looking at 8P cores here, but on top of that, we also get 8E cores to work with. Specifications. As a matter of fact, besides the core count, the clock speeds have changed too. At max, we should be looking at noticeably higher clock speeds. This, needless to say, also goes along with more cash and unfortunately a higher TDP rating. Test setup. The 13700K Raptor Lake processor I'll be installing into the ASRock Z790 Tai Chi motherboard. The 12700K, based on Alder Lake, is going into the Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X DDR5 board. Both systems are equipped with comparable memory kits, meaning that on the Raptor Lake system, it's the Kingston Fury Beast RGB 32GB DDR5 6000 MHz CL36 RAM doing its job, whereas for Alder Lake, it's the G-Skill Trident Z5 32GB DDR5 6000 MHz, also with CL36 timings. The graphics card remains fully identical, the ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC. And so does the remaining system, all identical. Clock speeds. First of all, with the auto settings out of the box, as dictated by the motherboard. Obviously, we're not exactly speaking of little jumps in clock speed. Both P as well as E cores are running significantly faster on the 13700K. The max achievable boost clock is quite impressive too. With the Raptor Lake part, we are seeing an increase by 400 MHz on P and E cores respectively. Now, depending on the motherboard, we are not always looking at enforced specified power limits by Intel. This can lead to higher performance, but in turn also drastically increases power draw and temperatures. Which is why I'll be testing with two configurations today. The 13700K I have therefore also fixed at its official power limit of 253 watts. The P-Core clock takes a minor hit on the 13700K by doing this, but overall barely anything changes. We do lose out on 100 MHz on the boost side of things, obviously. Performance, productivity. In the Cinebench R23 multi-core test run, the 13700K goes to show a roughly 33% performance increase over its predecessor 12700K. In this single core test, we are talking of about 8-9%. Not bad. 7-zip benchmark. Here Raptor Lake is able to take the lead over Alder Lake by nearly 37%. Moving on to the V-Ray 5 benchmark. Raptor Lake similarly doing a 35% better job. In the Corona rendering test, a 13700K completes the same task 28% faster than the 12700K. In the Blender test, we are then looking at another 33%. Now in the popular handbrake video encoding test, the Raptor Lake model performs 22% better or rather faster than Alder Lake, which isn't really a surprise. Last but not least, Vegas Pro 20. Here the 13700K takes the lead by yet another comparable 23%. Gaming. 3 d Mark Time Spy. Here Raptor Lake only shows a give or take 12% improvement. We see bigger gains in Assassin's Creed Valhalla though. As far as the average FPS is concerned, we are talking of 17% better values on Raptor Lake side and even up to 25% higher 1% lows, depending on the power limit. In Borderlands 3, there's a 12% increase over Alder Lake measurable. That would even be nearly 16% in the minimum department. Cyberpunk 2077. 
Here the 13700K on average performs 15% better than the 12700K when it comes to the lows, 14%. Having arrived in Far Cry 6, Raptor Lake as opposed to Alder Lake shows an FPS gain of 13% and a nice 22% as far as 1% lows are concerned. Forza Horizon 5 then spits out fairly odd results. The average makes the 13700K look 6% better than the 12700K, however, the 1% lows for whatever reason end up higher with the predecessor and that's by 8% easily. GTA 5 is offering us pretty much identical results, so we can just ignore and skip those. Minor gains can be measured in Horizon Zero Dawn though. Raptor Lake therefore manages a nearly 9% lead over Alder Lake. 11% when focusing on the lows. Metro Exodus now shows very interesting results. On average, the 13700K quote unquote is only 12% faster. In turn, however, in the 1% low department shows a whopping 33% gain, which is pretty noteworthy. I honestly expected bigger differences in the title Red Dead Redemption 2. But nonetheless, with Raptor Lake, we are doing roughly 10% better that's just 5% in the minimum department. Rise of the Tomb Raider allows the 13700K to lead by a mere 6% over the 12700K, 9% in the lows. Both CPUs end up outputting fairly similar performance in Shadow of the Tomb Raider though. A 13700K only offers a measly 3% higher average frame rate over the 12700K while doing 7% better in the 1% lows. Gaming average FPS. The FPS average of the 11 games tested clearly shows that with a 13700K we are looking at an about 8% higher average frame rate. As far as 1% lows are concerned, we are dealing with close to 11%. So Raptor Lake undoubtedly is offering the slightly smoother gaming experience, but not by much. Power consumption and temperatures. This is where Raptor Lake's good track record comes to an end. Even with that enforced 253 watt power limit, as specified by Intel, the 13700K at full load consumes 52% more power than its predecessor 12700K. In a worst case scenario, we're looking at even 65% higher power draw. That's kinda insane and shouldn't be underestimated. What a bummer. What a bummer indeed. Unfortunately, the 13700K's higher core count further leads to an increase in idle power draw. Now with the newer model, we are consuming about 39 to 43% more. Sadly, these aren't even the only bad news I have for you, because the temperatures end up quite high accordingly. Even with a capable 360mm AIO liquid cooler, we are quickly and easily looking at 100 degrees Celsius or at least being dangerously close to it. Compared to this, the 12700K is running super cool when put through the same kind of load. Conclusion Of course it was very much expected that the 13700K, especially due to its higher core and threat count, would be doing much better in terms of raw performance. This indeed is the case. The performance gains are worth praising, meaning in productivity workloads the 13700K sure became quite the impressive CPU as opposed to the 12700K. In the aspect gaming, there are performance gains, but nothing earth shattering by any means. Still, those FPS uplifts shouldn't be ignored either, I certainly don't want to talk down on Raptor Lake's improvements. Unfortunately, the overall image takes a significant hit due to the high power consumption and temperatures. It's definitely advisable to go with a quite powerful cooling solution and maybe even go ahead with undervolting. Aside from that, let's end on a more positive note, and that is that the 13700K also is compatible with Z690 motherboards, granted you first update the BIOS. DDR5 also is not obligatory here. So to be perfectly honest with you, I wouldn't be talking of an upgrade that's worth it, at least not when coming from the still quite powerful and speedy 12700K. Owners of that CPU therefore still can enjoy their processor and be assured runs cooler and more efficient than its successor. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.